Hey guys, this is Nick, and this is your next gaming news. Thought I'd come to you a little earlier this week. I found a couple things that were interesting and a couple things that just dropped that I thought we'd sit down and we'd talk about a little bit. The very first thing is the hottest topic that I've seen going on. Apparently, is everybody's kind of losing their mind about PS5 backwards compatibility. Well, I don't know that this is as big an issue as everybody thinks it is. Uh, I'll go ahead and pull up the article so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. As you can see, uh, Polygon has an article, PS5 won't be backwards compatible with the PS3, PS2, or PS1, according to Ubisoft. This is really shouldn't be too much of a surprise. There was a little bit of a rumor that the PS5 was going to be backwards compatible with all systems for a while. That pretty much got debunked because it was basically a rumor mill thing that even I had reported on. It turns out that that patent was part of PS Now and was not related at all to any kind of backwards compatibility that Sony was working on. Now, I do think that they're fully capable of being able to pull something like this off where you could have the PS3, the PS2, and PS1B backwards compatible. Compati compatible. However, I do not think that they are aiming for that right now. I think they are simply focused on doing a solid console launch and to try to get games out the door. And if anything, they'll work on more backwards compatibility later, or it may not even be a focus. Part of the problem that they have when it comes down to this kind of thing is they have different architectures for each generation that they've had. And that's not to say that Microsoft hasn't had different architectures, but they've all been mostly Intel-based architectures. So being able to emulate those and make those work on future systems has been easier for them than it actually has been for the PlayStation mark because they've had radically different architectures across the board. Um, so you're going to see that be more and more tricky. Now, I can hear you already saying, but, but they did it with the PS3, Nick. Why can't they do it here? Well, they did it with the PS3 primarily because they put a PS2 chip in there. And the PS2 was backwards compatible with the PS1 because they used a similar architecture. So, mm, that's, that's a lot more sketchy because that involves putting more hardware into the console, which increases the cost of the console, which is already going to be quite high this generation. So, I would not expect too much from this, at least not in the near future. Now, whether or not we get something like this further on down the road is another story. They may choose to revisit this. They may not. We just don't know yet. Now, the next thing that was on my list was it's rumored that the Super Mario remasters are going to be delayed. I had some of you asking me, I know um, one of my main followers, Mike, had been asking well, what about the 35th anniversary of Mario and what are they doing with that? Well, this kind of starts to answer that question a little bit. It looks like everything's kind of been delayed, which is not a huge surprise given how everything's kind of getting delayed and slipping these days. But it may be that part of this starts to slip into the very, very tail end of the year and may actually even hit into next year, which I think they have another anniversary next year. I can't recall off the top of my head. But here it says that 2020 marks the 35th anniversary of the beloved Super Mario franchise, and players have been anticipating major announcements from Nintendo since the year started. While many were pleasantly surprised with Paper Mario Origami King, I'm on the fence on that one, um, others were hoping for something a little more in line with a proper Mario title to celebrate the famous plumber's career. These hopes come from prior rumors suggesting that Nintendo would be, would be releasing a 3D Super Mario collection later this year as part of the 35th anniversary collection. According to this rumor, the collection would feature a fully remastered version of Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, Super Mario Galaxy, and Super Mario Galaxy 2 for the Switch. I would love if that dropped. I would buy that day one because I... Played 64, but it's been so long since I beat that game, I didn't even pick it up on the 3DS. Um, that's the other place you can play that, if you can find a copy. Uh, Super Mario Sunshine, I never beat. I think I've got a copy sitting around the house, but I no longer have my GameCube, so why I have it, I don't know. Uh, Super Mario Galaxy, I either need to boot up my Wii again, or something, because I never finished that one in Super Mario Galaxy 2, I never finished that one either. But... All these are solid games and would be a great addition to the Switch library and a great way to celebrate Mario. So it would be really nice to see those actually hit. Now, I don't know if 
um, that's actually going to happen or not, or if it's just going to be delayed until sometime early next year. But we're going to have to wait and see on that. Uh, I'm still hoping this comes out. I would, I'm still kind of excited for it. The more I think about it, the more it'd be great to be able to play these again. Uh, the next thing that came out that I noticed was, and this was just kind of neat. I wish I could find some video on this. Uh, 8 has come out with an arcade stick for the Switch. It works on both Bluetooth and it works on Wi-Fi. So it may actually work with your PS4 if you can get it connected because it does do Bluetooth. But this will also work with the PC. I, yeah, I don't think I had said that before. My apologies if I did. But you can actually change how the buttons are labeled. They actually light up with various different labels. This looks like it's a pretty solid arcade stick, and I'm kind of looking forward to messing around with this one when it comes out. Uh, my wife will hate me because I have a large collection of arcade sticks already, and I really do not need another one. Uh, but this one looks too cool to pass up, and if I do pick it up, I may actually do some comparisons with it and some of my other arcade sticks. Uh, the next thing that I found is that Acer has come out with a new 360 hertz NVIDIA powered gaming monitor. Now this thing actually looks pretty tight. This is basically built from the ground up to try to push like 8K gaming in the market. Um, and this is probably going to be one of the fastest monitors on the market and it's tailor made to be able to work with NVIDIA. It's a 25 uh, inch 24.5 inch monitor with a G-Sync processor which means it will stay in sync with your with your graphics card. G-Sync allows a lot of newer monitors to be able to hit higher refresh rates than they would be able to hit natively instead of having the 60 megahertz cap they have like a 100 megahertz cap or a 120 megahertz cap whatever it can work with on G-Sync depending on the level of their processor and your card that you have whether or not it's G-Sync compatible and what it can support so this will be a cool new piece of tech coming out that they're probably going to need because damn the new GeForce RTX line just came out you're looking at the spec sheets right now this thing is crazy um, this is more like, you know, everybody's talking teraflops, teraflops, teraflops. This is more like 20 to 30 teraflops. This thing's kind of dumb. Uh, <laughs> I'll actually see if I can actually find the number of teraflops in here. I don't see it on the, on the detailed specs. But the top resolution is insane. I mean, you're looking at like 8K resolution on pretty much across the board. You're looking at like... A memory interface band with a 384 bit, 320 bit, 256 bit on the low end version. And these are going to start somewhere between like four and five hundred dollars, is my understanding. And the 90, the 3090, I think, is going to be somewhere around fifteen hundred dollars, which is a pretty hefty price point. Now, if you have a 2080 Ti, I don't know that I would immediately jump on one of these. One, because that's a unbelievably expensive card almost as much as this 390 series is and I don't know what your performance difference is actually going to be usually these are like five to ten percent when you start talking TI models versus the new higher end models but if you have an older like say 2070 or a 2060 or something like that it may behoove you to start picking, looking at one of these lines because these are going to have you set for quite a while in conjunction with their announcement of this today they also announced that they're getting into like NVIDIA Broadcast app. This looks like it's going to be very, very cool. I'm actually quite looking forward to this, um, mostly because it can almost eliminate the green screen. Uh, I have one behind me now, which is, you know, obviously why I can kind of be in the frame while I'm showing you this stuff. But when they're looking at this, what it can do is it can kind of analyze your background and it can put a background behind you without the need of a green screen so you don't have to worry about positioning on that so much. They're also going to set it up to where it can help with noise reduction. So if you're streaming and you have any kind of noise like clacking from a keyboard or dogs barking or anything or any ambient noise like I might have with my window open currently, it'll help and deaden some of that so that your audience doesn't hear that. And the fact that they can do this and then you'll have minimal setup is actually really, really nice. I don't know if there's going to be a cost on this. I know there are a few other applications that do this kind of technology right now. 
but they have like a like monthly fee or a pretty high entry point to be able to get into that. So I'm very curious to see if Nvidia is just going to package this and try to start getting into the streaming market more, or if they're going to try to sell it to consumers um, for a specific price point, and if so, what that price point is going to be. A lot of people are wagering that this is going to come out around mid-September, sometime around like September 17th. So it's something to kind of keep your eye on. If there's a beta, I may try it and do some streams with it. If you guys come in and check out some of my streams, which I usually try to do every Thursday, by the way, on YouTube, and I may start trying to do them on Twitch again on other days just to kind of get more practice at it and to start building more communities and have more hands in various different pots. But... I would like to at least beta this a little bit or run a demo of it and kind of see how it works and see what you have as far as entry level options go and then what it's going to be like if you're more of a power user or a heavy streamer and how effective it really is and what's available because there's a lot of customization and a lot of various different other programs that are used in streaming and if this can help start kind of combining some of those and streamlining some of those, I think this could be a great addition to a streamer kit. But we're going to have to wait and see on that one for at least another couple of weeks. Let me know what you guys think about any of these different articles that I've covered today. Um, are you really disappointed about the backwards compatibility? Are you disappointed that you know the remasters are going to be delayed? Are you excited for the new GeForce cards and that kind of thing? Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.